Sheikh, I have a question regarding the whistle. In modern day, some people, they pull water, mouth and nose, and then they with all the body. So this whistle was not at the time of Prophet. At the time of Prophet, the Prophet first ablution, and then they with body. So this is not innovation to just pull water in mouth and nose, and then with all the body. What you have said, Brother Muhammad, is an observation that was not followed by any of the scholars of the schools of thought, to my knowledge. Simply because the Prophet ﷺ had never told us, follow this sequence in ghusl. And you will fail, even if you look in all of the books of the Sunnah, that the Prophet ﷺ said, you have to first wash your hands three times, wash your private part, perform wudu, then put three scoops of water on your scalp and ensure that the... Never. So when you come and boldly say that this is an innovation, you cannot do the other form of ghusl, who said that? One cannot jump to conclusions out of thin air and think like that and say that this is halal and this is haram without evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. Otherwise, a person might fall in a major sin. As mentioned in Ayah 33, Chapter 7, Surah Al-A'raf, to speak about Allah without knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ indicated in some hadith that spill the water on your body. That's ghusl. And the scholars stated that there are two types of ghusl. The ghusl that we follow, the way of the Prophet ﷺ, which was described, not ordained, not ordered to us. It was described that he used to do this. Or to follow the other way of ghusl, which is the linguistic part. So what does ghusl in Arabic means? To wash your whole body. Boom, I washed my whole body without the sequence. Any problem? No problem. Where did we get uh, swirling the water in the mouth and sniffing it and blowing it from our noses? From the sunnah. Because it's part of the wudu, part of the ghusl that the Prophet used to do, a.s. That's it. So be careful in what you say my friend